we shall reflect on the life of St. John Fisher. Born in 1469, the son of a small mercer who died when his children were very young, St. John Fisher went to Cambridge University at the age of 14. There, he distinguished himself greatly in his studies, was elected a fellow of Michael House, and was ordained priest with special permission since he was only 22. He became successively Senior Proctor, Doctor of Divinity, Master of Michael House and Vice-Chancellor of Cambridge. In the year 1502, he resigned his mastership to become chaplain to Lady Margaret Beaufort, the mother of King Henry VII. In 1504, he was elected Chancellor of the University, a post he held until his death. Later the same year, he was nominated Bishop of Rochester by King Henry VIII. Having accepted the bishopric rather reluctantly, he nevertheless carried out his pastoral duties with great zeal, held visitations, administered the sacrament of confirmation, disciplined the clergy, visited the sick poor in the hovels, distributed alms, and exercised generous hospitality. Observing strict austerity, he limited his sleep to four hours, and his fare always frugal, he kept a skull before him at meal times to remind himself of death. Books were his only pleasure. Because of his great learning and eloquence, he was specially selected to preach against Lutheranism when it was found to be making steady headway, particularly in London and in the universities. He also wrote four weighty volumes against Luther, which can claim the distinction of being the first books to be published in refutation of the new doctrines. He was chosen to be one of the Queen's counsellors in the nullity suit begun before Cardinal Camparejo at Blackfriars in 1529. Staunchly upholding the sanctity of marriage, he now championed the rights of the Church and the supremacy of the Pope. He earned increased royal displeasure by leading the opposition in the House of Lords to bills passed by the House of Commons as remedies for their grievance against the clergy. Two years later, in convocation, he spoke against accepting the king as supreme head of the Church of England. This continued opposition fixed Henry's determination to silence the aging bishop. The first move was to implicate him in an affair concerning Elizabeth Barton, the nun of Kent. His name was included in a bill of attainder on the grounds that he had not reported her to the king. He was fined heavily and though failing in health, was summoned to appear at Lambeth to take the oath to the new act of succession which he spurned. He was then sent to the tower where he remained without trial for a year. At the tower, questioned repeatedly, Fisher stood his ground, stating univocally that the king was not, nor could be, by the law of God, supreme head of the church. Charged with high treason, he was condemned to death. The execution, having taken place on the 22nd of June 1535, his body was given a rough burial in the churchyard of All Hallows near the tower while his head was displayed on the London Bridge. As his place of burial attracted many who venerated him, his body was reburied in the Tower Church of St. Peter Advincula. Some 450 years later, that is, in 1935, he was canonized by Pope Pius IX.